Today is Tuesday, and as every Tuesday there is a new You Call That An App episode. Are you ready? Follow me. Hey yo, are you coming? Starting with Rust and the R Note app, which is the best way to take handwrite notes or do sketching with your tablet, and everything translates to vectors. Just inside the last couple of weeks, our note gained many bug fixes and performance improvements, and the developers also added a feature to configure shortcuts for drawing pad buttons. Coco might not be here anymore, but first you have a much cuter hostess, Meow. and secondly, you can still read her manga on Comico that gets weekly updates for syncing with the servers. Okay. If GTK was working on Android, Kamiko would have now been one of the top anime apps on Play Store. And because Elon Musk will inhabit Mars before GNOME makes an actual phone, I suggest to GNOME developers to work on GTK portability before anything else. You don't have any savings, and you'll never get a budget if you keep spending your time on YouTube, so probably you don't care about a finance manager. But weird things happen to Denaro. First it's written in c -sharp with Blueprint, so that's one more option for GTK development. Even weirder, the app is also available on Windows, but with the WinUI 3 and not GTK 4. Other than that, Denaro plays locally only, but it can import and export to CSV and some other formats specifically for financial exchanges like OFX and QIF. Sometimes you may need to encode a video to another format, but you're super lazy to check on CLI options. That's where Aviator fits in. You import a video, you have a few settings you may want to change, like the exported resolution, and next it's the audio options too. When done, you select the preferred video container, and you tap the export. Of course Aviator is not for anything big, but best highlight? Stop button really works. Like it immediately stops the process. You don't see that very often, do you? Not sure if you remember the early days of Notejot, but originally was this stupid sticky notes app everyone was loving. Later it got ambitious, it got notebooks and stuff, and a markdown editor too. But most importantly, everything was moved to a single window. A resizable single window most specifically, but that's so expected for every GNOME app anyway. The point? You can still get the old behavior back, and actually much improved. Sticky will give you this multiple notes interface that no matter their small size, they're very powerful with markdown abilities. And that mother window? You can close it if you don't want it, and you can bring it back when needed with a shortcut. When something runs on your PC, is never a true AI. At the best is some stupid neural networks algorithm we call AI just because it sounds cool. But it's actually cool when upscaler algorithms are optimized for digital art. Then again, that process will take forever. So, after 14 million light years, your local AI is done, and it's time to gather the fruits of our labor. Fortunately, the image was saved. On the left we have the original, which is 900 times 900 resolution, and on the right is the upscaled image at 3,600 pixels. And if you look closely, you'll see that my cheek symbol is actually a hand drawing, so I'd say that upscaler worked. Okay, let's make a backup. We'll save local, inside our home folder. And next we'll encrypt with a password that I will put visible, so I can see the video in case I forget. Besides, it's not that you can come to deep space and hack me, ha! Huh? 
All right. Next, we need to select the folders we want to back up, and we'll use magic again to save you from the file chooser. Obviously, I don't want to save my home inside my home. So, let's back up now. And then, we can close this window, and if you have GNOME 44 already, you'll get the Pika working on background notification. Next is something that GNOME desperately needs, meaning a live captions functionality. The following app will work locally, which means it will be intensive in resources, it won't be able to translate, it can't use very smart transformers, and in the end of the day, it won't be a good solution to our problems, but at least we'll keep your privacy safe. So, this is it, and the options include an always on top, keeping history to a file, and even filtering profanity. Enough said, let's see what this thing can actually do. Gravity, as the curvature of space, this is so the, if the photon follows the curvature of space. Amazing. It knows no other job in this world but to do that. It's awesome. But in addition, so cool. the original 1919 eclipse expedition by Sir Arthur Eddington to test Einstein's general relativity that light would bend near a gravity source. So you wait for a total solar eclipse. Okay. This was super good, beating every expectation I had. Meanwhile, the developer that does the live captions app, he also does the speech-to-text library. Big, big respects for his skills. And since we're here, this is Edge 112 from the developer channel that comes with these new rounded tabs I like a lot, and much more rounded elements here and there. Something crazy, though, is those fat borders around the main content that I can't even find an option to turn them off. It's on full screen, too, but to be honest, after a few days you get used to them, you even like them. But nothing matters as long as Edge has this magical sidebar that I may talk to you about some other time. And before you blame me for using Edge, it's just getting worse, because I'm actually trying to switch to Microsoft. Not like Microsoft Windows, but Azure Cloud and Microsoft Accounts. Anywho, mera mera.